I, I have a feeling our next guest will not be breaking into song, but who knows? Anything can happen on a Wednesday. Hall of Fame head coach Tony Dungy joins us now. Coach, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, guys. Good to be with you. What's up, Coach? Coach, wh when's the last time you sang? Uh, it's, uh, it's been quite a while. I would say uh, <laughs> University of Minnesota fight song, maybe 1977. <laughs> coach, I know that, you sing in the, church. Is that the coach rookie? sings in church. I know he's a singer uh, oh, in church. I sing in church. You're right. I do that's, sing in yeah, church. Yeah, but that's, that's it different. It's very, okay. Okay. it's very easy to blend. It's like, trust me, it's very easy to blend a bad voice in with the <laughs> yeah, church crowd. Singing is. alone is a different endeavor altogether. Yeah, well, probably, you're right. My fight song as, as a rookie. Yeah. 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 Well, um, you know, and I want to take you back to that time of the seventies coach. Cause we've been talking this week about Vaughn Miller, Super Bowl 50 MVP, his habit of bringing together pass rushers from throughout the national football league to get guys on the same page about how they apply their trade. And I have to think this is a product of free agency. I can't imagine back in the seventies, LC Greenwood and Carl Eller were hanging out in the off season, <laughs> comparing notes on how to sack each other's quarterbacks. No, it, it is a product of free agency and social media and all that. And there, there's always been camp. And I think what offensive guys have done, quarterbacks have done it. They just don't, uh, they don't publicize it. You know, they talk to each other about, hey, how did you attack this defense? What went well? What did you try to do? And, uh, you know, I think it happens, but not like this where you, you're saying, hey, we're all going to get together and we're going to get better as a group uh, of position players. That, that's a little rare, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Coach, do you find it that, you know, you're going to – people are going to steal ideas from each other, lose the competitive balance? I don't know if you heard much what we said at the last segment before you came on, but we were kind of arguing going back and forth, and Von Miller was kind of trying to say, no, all my moves are out there, but I was trying to explain different coaches can teach different techniques a different way, and, you know, the lights can pop on for a player to go, oh, okay, that's how he does it. That's how he's so successful. Do you agree with those sentiments? Am I wrong there? What, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, you do want to be careful about helping other people uh, play against you. It, it does happen all the time. I can remember some of the great conversations we had on the bus coaching the Pro Bowl, and you got Howie Long uh, and Art Still and, and, you know, different guys, pass rushers, talking about different, well, this is what I try to do. This is how I set people up. So people talk all the time, uh, but it, it, it just is rare to say, you know, hey, we're going to do this with, a big, big group of people, and I'm going to try to help a bunch of other guys get back. Yeah, Vaughn Miller may learn some things too. Right. And that, that's part of it. But I, I think if I was on top of my game, I'd be a little hesitant to try to share with everybody else and help them get better uh, to, to beat me. Coach, yesterday and today, the competition committee talking to teams about how they are going – to claw back at the new rule making pass interference subject to replay review in all cases. We're expecting the competition committee to use this blank check that they've gotten from ownership to revise that rule. What advice would you give the competition committee as they embark on this effort now to, to partially rescind the rule that was passed in March that all pass interference will be subject to replay? I just think back to my time on the committee, Mike. And George Young was kind of the, the sage, the old guy on the on the of the group back then. And he used to say, "Be careful when you let the camel get his nose under the tent, because the tent's going to tip over." And I think that's what's going to happen here. That camel is just going to keep coming in. I've been watching. You know, I have fun just going back watching highlights and, and videos. And I, I've watched some of these playoff games and Super Bowls. And you see these touchdown catches, and if they're all going to get reviewed, and is there offensive pushing off? Is there a defense that they grab? Um, you know, there were two calls in our championship game that would have gotten turned around. Uh, one would have benefited us, and one would have benefited New England, uh, but they would have definitely been turned around if you reviewed pass interference. I, I just I think it's going to be a real, real headache for the league. And I think the, the less they can do, the less they review, the better off they're going to be. Well, Coach, so yeah, I, it's the next thing I want to ask you. What, what do you think the proper mechanics are to execute the new reviewing of the pass interference? Do you want to see challenge, another challenge flag in coaches' hands? Or do you want to see the NFL control this and, and be up in the booth and, and uh, kind of buzz down to say, oh, we need to look at this and then be in control of the situation? Yeah, it's a it's a tough call because um, you know the one way you could do it is say okay, scoring plays 
uh, automatically get reviewed. And so if a guy catches a, a touchdown pass, it's going to be reviewed, and you could put the pass in the first segment of it in that. But the balls that aren't caught, you know, can, can be an issue. Right. Um, I was watching one game. Uh, it was a Monday night game. I was coaching Tampa Bay Bucks. We were playing the Minnesota Vikings. Jacquez Green catches a touchdown pass in the back of the end zone. Uh, Al Michaels and everybody, they're looking at it. Did he really hold on to the ball? Well, if you look at it closely, it probably wasn't a catch. But then, again, on the replay, he got grabbed before the ball got there. Yeah. So what do you do in that situation? They rule it a touchdown on the field. It really wasn't a touchdown, but there should have been pass interference. I, I think you're going to have a lot of these kind of issues that nobody anticipated before. Great point. And, and Coach, one thing you were alarmed by over the weekend, and we were too, the comments from Competition Committee Chairman Rich McKay – that they tell the officials to officiate Hail Mary plays differently for pass interference than regular plays, that that what is pass interference the rest of the game all of a sudden isn't pass interference. I don't see anything in the rule book that invokes the Hail Mary standard. I th- This, to me, is, is as jarring as anything I've heard the NFL admit to because they're basically saying there's a second set of rules that, that they just secretly enforce among themselves. And, and that was always the complaint when I was coaching. And maybe that's being done. And maybe they have always told the officials that. But if that's the case, tell me that as a coach so I can coach it that way. Don't officiate a certain way, but I, I don't know it. And, and to me, I don't know how you can do that. I don't know how you can say, hey, we're going to review pass interference in the end zone except on Hail Mary plays. Uh, that doesn't make sense at all. I think you, you if you tell the officials that, and you do lead into the New Orleans Rams situation where, hey, it, it, it's late in the game and it's not a Hail Mary, but do I really want to call this? Uh, no, we'll let the players decide on the field. Uh, to me, if it's a penalty, if it's in the rule book, you've got to enforce it, whether it's a Hail Mary play or not. And Terry McCauley had the best comment. You know, pass interference is materially impacting someone's ability to catch the ball. And you can't do that. Uh, whether it's the first play or the last play, yeah, okay, we can have a debate. Or, you know, if there's five guys around who materially influences some, but if you see it, you've got to call it. And if you've got this replay system in place and you see it on replay, then you have to enforce it, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm with you all the way there, Coach. I, I really am. Okay, another like huge discussion this week that's kind of popping up, and it seems like the NFL is inching towards this conversation. Your thoughts on an 18-game regular season schedule? I think it would be a mistake. I, I think one of the things that's great about the NFL now is every game matters. You've got these tight races. 16 games is a lot. You want to get into the playoffs. You, you want people to be ready to play right. in meaningful games in January. I'm watching the NBA playoffs now, and you see the effect of this long season. Yes. Kawhi Leonard limping up and down the, the floor. Right. Kevin Durant out. Yeah. Clay Thompson maybe out. That's not what people want to see in the playoffs. You're right. I have to think, you know, we would get some of the same thing if you add more games. And I just, I don't think it would be good for the players. I don't think it'd be good for the product. You know, Phil Simms was on Chris's podcast yesterday thinking the players will want it once they see how much money they will make from those extra games, once they have the numbers put in front of them. Do you think players would be, you know, that willing to take the extra money if it means putting themselves in a position where they would be banged up? I mean, players are wired a different way than us because they still think they can do anything and everything. Would that money lure the players to do it if they ever had that put in front of them in in raw dollars and cents? Well, I think that's the hope of everybody who's pushing this 18-game season that, that the kind of greed factor will kick in. And everybody right now, when you say 18 games, everybody says, oh, no, 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 no. But if it means X number of thousands of dollars more for each player, then you will get guys who say, oh, I can do that. I can play two more uh, and, and make that money. I don't think it would be good, but I, I think that w- it, it would sway the, the bar a little bit and, and guys would think about it. So I can do it for, for that, yeah. Coach, there's been a possibility that was mentioned from time to time, and it's still lurking out there. And I think there are some people in the league office that are intrigued by this. The idea of expanding to 18 regular season games, but limiting all players except quarterbacks and specialists to 16. 
as a coach, what 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 kind of what kind of uh, chest pains would something like that cause? You you would adjust to that. Um, coaches adjust to everything, but I, I'll tell you what the the gambling aspect of it now. There would just be a lot of things in place. Okay, I'm going to rest my guys in games where I think we're going to win, but we're favored by eight and we win by three. Um, you know, I, I just think there's a lot of things in place when you start lending guys. I'm, I'm the whole paid. Which two games am I going to hold Peyton Manning out of? Um, which two games is Tom Brady not going to play? Right. Um, I, I just, I don't know how, how you could really do that. And, um, you know, as a coach, I'm trying to win, and, and I come down to the, do I have to save my guys for the last couple of games in case we have to win them? Um, so what if you, you have know, what if you I, have injuries during the week of practice? Yeah, How do you balance yeah. those things out? There's just too many things that I think so, would cause problems. Right, right. Well, I tell you I what, think, the NFL you know, is determined. Yeah, Go ahead. The competition committee has always talked about balancing the level playing field and making everything fair, and, you know, that's why we have the – uh, you know, 53-man squads, non-practice squads, but you can only dress a certain amount of people because they want everybody to have the same uh, opportunity to field players and win games. I, I think when you start getting into that, it would be very difficult to, to make it fair week in and week out for, for both sides. Right. And, Coach, we're with you. I mean, I think 18 games is too much, but I also feel like that that the dollars and cents are going to push this thing and push this thing until it, it becomes inevitable, and, and who knows how long that'll take. Thanks, as always, for some of your time, and we hope uh, to talk to you real soon. All right, sounds good. You guys have fun the rest of the day. Huh? Be good, Coach. All right. Be the man. There he is, Hall of Fame head coach Tony Dungy. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.